Hello everyone, welcome back to MLS Moves. Please make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Once we hit 5,000 subscribers, we'll be celebrating with a special jersey giveaway. Two lucky subscribers will have the chance to win a jersey of their choosing. Whether you're a diehard fan or you're just joining the fun, this giveaway is our way of saying thank you for your support. So spread the word, hit that subscribe button, and let's reach our goal by the end of July. Now, back to the video. <sighs> you know, this is uh, this is getting kind of old, having to uh, continuously talk about all of uh, Greg Berhalter's shortcomings, the inconsistencies of this team, and always coming up short, it feels like, and disappointing um, all the U.S. men's national team fans. So... Um, as far as the the Panama game, Timothy Weya makes a boneheaded decision and gets a red card early in the first half. And after that, the U.S. men's national team was playing um, keep away or or just trying to uh, you know manage the crisis and try to get a draw at least, right? Not not necessarily even win the game. I, they were just trying to. Uh, get a draw with Panama, and it looked good at first. You know, Ballo had that absolute uh, world-class goal. We're up 1-0, but then Blackman for Panama scores the tying goal. And you're kind of thinking, oh, man, this isn't good. You know, uh, wh what the hell's going on? Uh, you know, even with a man down, we should be – Looking better, we should win this match. And of course, you know, Greg Berhalter and his great tactics, right? His great tactical mind, the American Pep Guardiola. Yeah. Anyway, he makes some substitutions to try to stop the bleeding or try to get a draw, his signature draw, right? The man plays for draws, he doesn't play for wins. And so he substitutes Gio Reyna out in the second half for Cameron Carter Vickers. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have been wanting to see Cameron Carter Vickers because I think that we are vulnerable with Tim Ream. And for the love of God, Chris Richards can't play worth a damn when he's in a U.S. men's national team kit. He can't play worth a damn. He's, he's not Chris Richards of Crystal Palace. He's Chris Richards of the U.S. men's national team, which is not good. It's, medi it's mediocre. Anyway, um, so we get Cameron Carter Vickers in, someone I've been wanting to see, just to see what he can give us, right? Because Tim Ream is not going to be our savior forever. I mean, he is a 37-year-old center back. So it's clear as day that they're trying to park the bus. They're playing to get a draw. Cameron Carter Vickers is in. Gio Reyna is out. Cardosa is in. Uh, Matt Turner has to come out because he has a rib injury or a lower leg injury. And we're getting to see Ethan Horvath, the, the first – glimpse we've got to see of him and even when we're playing to park the bus we still find a way to screw it up we lose to panama 2-1 guys do you realize we're on the verge of getting grouped in a in a group that has panama bolivia and uruguay now listen i understand that it was going to be a little bit overly ambitious to think we were going to win the group, right? With Uruguay, we were going to beat Uruguay. We we're going to finish the top of the group, but I never in a million years thought that we'd be grouped and that we couldn't finish above Bolivia in Panama. Guys, we are one game away from getting grouped in Copa America. One game away. We have to beat Uruguay to guarantee we finish in second place or win the group. We have to tie, have a draw, and hope that Panama screws it up against um, Bolivia in order to make it out of the group stage. Now, just for clarity, right? Because a lot of people are pushing back and saying, well, it's about the players, right? What are the players doing? The players aren't are living up. McKinney's not living up. Polisic's not living up. Ballo didn't do enough, uh, even though I think he had a decent game. Gio didn't do enough. Tim Ream was bad. Yeah, the players are bad, but let, let's just talk about this for a second. Let's just put let's just get some context here. In 2014, 
the U.S. men's national team had a lesser talented roster than they do right now. That is not debatable. If any of you guys would like to debate that, DM me on Twitter. We'll set something up. We'll make a debate on why uh, the 2020, or I'll debate you on why the 2020. Uh, four team smokes the 2014 team. Nobody's going to beat me on that debate. Okay. So the 2014 team, a lesser talented roster in 2014 in Brazil, advanced in a group that had Portugal with a prime Ronaldo, a Germany team who won the damn World Cup in 2014, and a Ghana team who is a very competitive African nation. Uh, uh, cl- uh, national team, right? They're one of the better teams in Africa. We can't advance in a group with Panama, Bolivia, and Uruguay on American soil? What are we doing? Like, what the hell are we doing? I- I'm telling you right now, if Greg Berhalter keeps his job after we get grouped, which is looking pretty likely, I'm not watching a single U.S. men's national team game until that that bald man is fired. I'm not watching a single national team game until he's gone. We're having a tournament on American soil. Every single game is played in the United States. And we can't make it out of our group stage? They were already setting the expectations low for us to not make it past the the quarterfinals. Oh, we can't win. We got to play Colombia or Brazil. We can't beat those teams. Why are we selling ourselves so short? Why can't we beat those teams? We got the golden generation. I will debate anyone that this is the golden generation of U.S. men's national team talent. This is the most talent we have had in our nation's history for soccer. We have a mediocre second division Swedish losing national team coach who was mediocre in Major League Soccer when it was worse 10 years ago. It's looking bleak. It's looking bleak. But if we don't fire this man after this embarrassing inexcusable performance and not just this match, but in Copa America in general. And then his two Copa America friendlies to prepare for this tournament. If we don't fire him after that, all hope is lost. All hope is lost. 2026 will be squandered. 2026 will be squandered. You want a silver lining? This is an opportunity to get it correct. Hiring this man again was a mistake. Him failing could be a blessing because then we might actually be able to get a coach who is qualified to coach this talent. A coach that can get us to where we need to get or to go, right? I just said Jurgen Klinsmann. Okay, fine. Jurgen Klinsmann's very controversial against, uh, you know, for the national team fan base. I get it. Okay. But you can't deny that the man didn't get. Uh, more out of the talent than he had. Like, he squeezed every ounce of potential out of those players. Greg Berhalter's done the opposite. He's always disappointing. And I just can't believe we're going to get grouped. I can't believe we're going to get grouped against Panama, Bolivia, and Uruguay. And it's not even about elitism, right? I'm not... I'm not looking down on these teams. I'm not expecting to just roll them, but to lose to Panama at home is inexcusable. When is there going to be any accountability? When is there going to be any accountability? Listen, anyone who knows me and knows that I'm a U.S. men's national team fan knows that I haven't seen the magic since the 2014 World Cup, how we just felt, I feel like even if the talent disparity or there was a talent disparity. We had a chance to win. I believe, I believe that we will win. I don't believe we will win anymore. The magic's gone. Greg Berhalter has no enthusiasm, no hope, no aura, nothing. The man has nothing. He's a loser. And I'm not just saying this. I have. I don't hate Greg Berhalter as a person. He's a mediocre coach. I don't want him coaching my team. And I don't want to hear some BS excuse about Well, the players are comfortable around him. Well, hey, this is what you're getting with comfortable. You're seeing the product of comfortable. I don't like it. 
I don't want my coach to be friends with his with his players. I want a coach who's going to get the most out of his players. Not sit around the campfire and have s'mores and talk about their life. I want the guy who's going to put the W's in the win column. That's what I want. I don't know about you guys, but that's what I want. I want a team that's going to meet expectations in the most important soccer year in this country in 2026. That's what I want. Not what I've been seeing. Things have got to change. Okay, this is inexcusable. This was an embarrassing match, and it, there is no excuse for it. Timothy Way gets red. Okay, that's on coaching. Where's the where's the discipline? Where's the where's the structure? Where's the identity? It's just oh, not good. Not good. Um, it's just bleak. My word is inflated. You know. My word is inflated, and you know it would have been nice in the presidential election tonight to hear one of these two elderly men say something about how bad the soccer federation and the U.S. soccer is in its current state, and maybe that they would do something about it. You know, it's it's that's halfway a joke, but it you know maybe would have been nice to hear something about that. Um, yeah, I mean, guys, I, let me know in the comment section how are you feeling about this. Greg, Greg has to go, right? Please tell me Greg has to go. Greg's getting fired, right? If we get grouped, you do you believe this? Greg will be fired if if we're grouped. Is there hope? Is there light in the tunnel? Let me know in the comment section. Until next time, I will see you all soon.